Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimp of the Limp, and I'm here with another preview of a Kickstarter that's coming up. I know I've done a lot of these here recently. It just seems like everyone's launching them all at the same time. This one I actually received an email letting me know about it, so I thought I would do a quick preview for it and let you guys know about it just in case you're interested. Now, you will notice when you're looking at this Kickstarter page that I'm showing you that it looks a little bit different, and it's because it's a, a preview a placeholder for the Kickstarter. Hasn't launched just yet, but it's going to look very similar to this. So I'm showing you guys based off of this. And this is on a game called Axis and Allies Arnhem 44. So think Axis and Allies like you've seen before, all the different iterations of it, but this is focused more on some specific battles, and it looks like they're planning on doing a series of these. First one being about Operation Market Garden, and likewise it's called Arnhem 44. Uh, we'll watch the video like normal, and then we'll scroll down through and show you guys a little bit of the game. At last, a and &A Arnhem 44, Operation Market Garden. This new series from Cadet is called the Armies and Alliances series, a and &A. The first in this series is no surprise, it's Arnhem 44, with the familiar miniatures representing tanks, infantry, artillery, 88s, fighters, bombers, airborne units, and the Waffen SS. This game is exactly what the community has been waiting for. 52 action cards enhance the historical storyboard of the battle, while a simple yet realistic combat system means every decision and roll of the dice makes a difference. With a big, beautiful map created by Mark Von Marshall and an easy-to-read, large-print, highly illustrated rulebook, this game is ready to hit the table the minute you get the shrink wrap off. It's got 114 minis, 52 game cards, the map's two big bad 22 by 34 mounted sections that fold out and fit together for the ultimate market garden experience. All segments of the campaign are included from Eindhoven through Hell's Highway to Nijmegen and the dangerous route to Arnhem across the Lower Rhine. The players get to refight the whole battle from the initial airborne drops to the final showdown between the two SS Panzer Corps and the Allied 30th Corps. Supply, air combat, ground attack, drop zones, engineer, air defense, and reinforcements are all included, along with leadership effects, historical events, and plenty of easy chrome built into the design via the event cards. It's only 10 simple turns and it plays quick, but even the hardcore gaming enthusiasts will discover a well-balanced challenge that is not to be taken for granted. Can you capture the bridges along Hell's Highway and hold them long enough for the 30th Corps to make it over the Rhine at Arnhem? Or will you dash the Allied plans as the German player slamming the door on the bold Allied gamble? This one can go either way every time. History depends on you. Uh, so take a look at the campaign info here uh, for the answers to all and any of your questions, from components to examples of play. Uh, and don't hesitate to reserve your copy. A and A Arnhem. All right, so like you said, this is a game by Cadet Games, and you see it's being run by a gentleman named Kevin Talley. Kevin Talley was actually in the U.S. Army. We won't hold that against him. Well, not completely against him anyway. I mean, it's Marines here. Come on. But uh, they do have a long series of games. I've touched on uh, some of their games previously, some of their Vietnam games, but this one is a World War II one, and I like where they're going with it. I do believe there is a place for games like this because war games can vary in different levels of difficulty, right? Like, I love big games spread across the map and just looking at everything, but sometimes you want that real deep experience, something like a 1985 that's a huge map with a lot of counters, a lot of pieces. But that one, it, it takes a while. It does take a while to, to really get into it. There's a lot of rules, a lot of mods, a lot of this you have to worry about. And this is kind of the other end of that spectrum where you want a big game, you want it laid out in front of you, you want to enjoy it, but you don't want to be you know stuck in the minutia and you want to just enjoy the gaming experience. And that's what I've always loved about these Axis and Allies types of games. Now, it is going to be similar to the others that we've seen in like Axis and Allies, where it's got like minis and then round little uh, counters underneath them, symbolizing extra steps of that mini, whatever it is, infantry, tank, artillery, that type of stuff. Okay. Now, when it comes to the pledge level, it's really just how many copies of the game you're getting. It's either one, two, three, or four. So you can buy 
more than one if you want one. You see here the basic one here on the right is $79. So basically 80 bucks. And I think uh, I remember looking at the bottom of this is something around 15 or 20 for shipping. So anticipate that. So we're looking at like 95 to 100 just depending on how much the shipping is. Like total out the door. All that stuff. We'll check it But when we get done here. Uh, but like I said, you see gift pack. So it has two copies or four pack just depending on how many copies you want to get. Obviously, I'm only going to need one. And you see some of the pictures here. I like the look of the map. I, I'll see if I can zoom in on this picture a little bit, but you guys can see that you are going to be going after uh, the bridges in this game. And they mentioned here the other games that they've got. They were Soldiers, Dak Toe, Hill uh, 875, and the Nguyen Hu Hui. <laughs> 72 whatever i'm saying that wrong i know i'm saying that one horribly wrong you guys have to forgive me i apologize uh but they do have a series of world war or excuse me vietnam era games that play similar to this similar style components so if you're interested in vietnam definitely check those out as well and you see here the list that they're planning on going with. So we've got Arnhem 44, Barbarossa 41, Blitzkrieg 40, Stalingrad 42, and more. So we'll just have to see how these all play out. Now, I'm not going to read through all the, the text here. You can definitely go back and read that yourself. But I do want to scroll down a little bit, show you guys a few more of the pictures, and then kind of go over the gameplay a little bit. Because I do like how they put in some examples of gameplay and it, how it's going to work. And it's a basically contested die roll type system, which I think will work pretty well and allow the game to flow uh, smoothly. So you see here it lists down game components. There's a buttload of them. You're going to be using uh, six-sided dice and then bunches of the little minis like you've seen in Axis and Ally type games. See 22 German infantry, two German 105 howitzers, Four SS soldiers, three 88 flat cannons. Gotta love those flat cannons. Four Panther tanks, one King Tiger, uh, two recon German units, one mech, three German fighters, one German bomber. And then roughly similar numbers as far as the USA forces. 22 uh, infantry, nine British soldiers, six British uh, infantry soldiers, three Polish six uh, avian pack howitzers, four Sherman tanks, three self-propelled artillery, four 25-pounder artillery. Let's see, was that? Four mechanized infantry, one engineer unit, two P uh, P-51 fighters, two Spitfires, one B-17 bomber, and three uh, C-47 transports, because obviously they did have airborne drops uh, during uh, Arnhem, and one Lancaster bomber. And then there's a assorted supply of what they call the roundels. So basically the little tokens that you're going to have underneath uh, to signify extra steps for the different units. And then assorted admin markers like nation markers, stuff like that. They do go over the history here. You guys can check that out if you would like, if you want to know more about it. But I'm pretty sure a lot of the people who are going to be watching this, seeing my channel, probably know a fair amount of the history already. Uh, when it comes to the units, you see here, this is what the... Infantry, Recon, SS Veteran, which they are going to have a little bit more attack power. You'll see how this comes into play later on, but like the regular infantry's combat factors, one, defense value of two, movement allowance of seven, uh, Recon is similar, one, two, uh, 12 movement allowance, but the SS Veterans, they have two, two, and seven. So they move the same, defend the same, but they attack a little bit better, the Veteran units. Mechanized infantry, 2, 2, and 10. Armor, 3, 3, and 10. Then the heavy armor, we're getting into 4 combat factor. 4 defense, but movement allowance of 10. Artillery is one of those things that's kind of special because they can shoot a little bit farther. They don't have to be right on top of the enemy to attack them. So you can have them supporting a battle from the back, just like you know artillery would do. We're going to have regular artillery, self-propelled artillery, and 88 flak artillery. And they do have a special ability that they get to attack with their full value at adjacent hexes. So like regular artillery has their attack value reduced if the enemy's right on top of them, but the 88 flak doesn't. And I was kind of thinking about this when I was looking at it because the 88 flak's attack value is a three, 
And I kind of would have figured that would be a four since, you know, the tiger has a four. But I'm anticipating they probably dropped that down just a little bit for playtest purposes. It was probably a little too powerful at four and why they brought it down to a three. And then we're going to have things like fighters and bombers. The fighters only have a ground attack value of one, but the bombers have a value of three. And then you see these little step rondelles, which we'll talk about a little bit more. But again, they're just the, the counter to represent extra units being there. As far as how the game, the sequence play is going to be, you're going to have your card draw and the cards are going to be things that give you like combat bonuses or kind of allow you to break the rules of the game. You'll get a hand of five cards, your opponent get a hand of five cards, and then you'll draw throughout the course of the game and you'll get to play those cards during your turn. You'll get to play one, your opponent will get to play one, and then on their turn, same thing. You play one, they play one. So you can play up to two cards in a full round of a turn. So your turn, your opponent's turn. So it goes card draw, then air phase, then airborne supply phase that's gonna start at turn three, movement phase, and then the combat phase, with the German player turn being similar in the order that it takes place. Okay, now there's a combat example here. I'm not going to read through the whole thing because that would take a little while. But the basic gist of it is that you're going to add up your combat factors for that attack. All right, so the attacker will add up their values. The defender will add up their values. And then each person's going to roll a D6 and you're going to compare those results. All right, so we've got the little chart here that you see it's the attacker and then the defender. And it's got the numbers, shows the different types of units. You'll add all that together, right? Your factor, their factor, plus a D6 roll. And then that gets compared on this combat results table. All right, so as you're looking at this combat results table, you see how it says one to five, no hit, six to 10, one hit, 11 to 14, two hits. So like I said, you're gonna add that to a D6 roll, your combat factor, total combat factor to a D6 roll then you're going to look and see where you are on this chart and you'll put one uh, one of those little tokens on there representing how many hits you got all the way from none up to five. Your opponent's going to do the same thing, so attacker and defender, and then you're going to uh, compare the results. All right. So whatever the difference is between those results is the amount of hits that the losing side takes. It sounds a little complicated, but it's not. If you're looking at here, the combat results table, they have a marker on each one from the example where it shows they both got one hit. So it's effectively no result. It canceled out. Neither side took enough casualties to really change the combat. But if one side had been up or down a step, they would have one hit difference. And then that hit would be applied to the losing side. Okay. So whoever gets the most hits you're going to subtract the loser's hits from that and that difference, right? The difference in the totals is going to be applied to the loser and they're going to take those hits in a combination of step losses and being forced to retreat, depending on how many hits are applied. And it's really just that simple. So it's not a difficult combat system. And the cool part is you can add things to that. Like, you know, during your combat, you'll be able to have air support and artillery that affect it, but you also have those cards that I was talking about earlier that can come into play and add combat factors if you play it during the right stage. So you might be able to pull one out and boom, you bump yourself up a couple of factors that your opponent wasn't anticipating and you're able to win the attack when it didn't look like you'd be able to. As far as the air phase, the air phase is being handled a little differently and I'm kind of curious to see how this plays out because you roll to determine how many aircraft you're going to have available for you for that turn. So here where we're looking at it, where the allied aircraft roll and their placement, they have a D6 roll, one no aircraft, and then it goes all the way up to six with increasing amounts of aircraft available depending on how high your roll is. So none to two, three, three fighters and a bomber, four fighters and one bomber, or all the way up to four fighters and two bombers that you get to use for that turn. The German role is similar, but they don't have as a, uh, access to as many aircraft. So one or two is none for them. Then it goes one fighter, two fighters, three fighters, and then three fighters and a bomber. 
and it does say that all planes are removed, uh, all planes from both sides are removed from the map at the end of that airborne supply phase. And here this part just talks about how the cards work, which I was going over earlier. Basically allows you to kind of break the rules, get bonuses here or there. And again, they're gonna be shuffled up. You'll have your hand of cards, your opponent will have their hand of cards. And down here it's showing a order of battle for the different units that are gonna come available through different segments of the game. And again, the game is 10 turns. And we see that it's scored based on victory points. And each side is basically trying to cause losses. That's going to gain you victory points for causing step losses to your opponent. But then you also are going to get uh, bonuses for gaining control of certain things. Like the allies gaining control of the bridges obviously is going to get them more victory points. The key thing that the allies are going to want to do is to get their non-airborne units because of course, they can drop their airborne units further ahead, so they don't count for this. But their non-airborne units further up across the map, across certain rivers, they'll get points for doing that, while the Germans will get points for preventing them from getting units across those different segments of the map. And then again, we see some more pictures here of the map. And like I said, I like it. I think it looks good. And these signify the bridges that they need to capture, and then... See, we've got some showing some of the infantry with their counters underneath, signifying the fact that they've got a couple of steps. So like these infantry that you're all looking at right now, all of these count as two steps worth of infantry because they've got the miniature itself and the token underneath. If the token's gone, then it's just one step of infantry. And then there's a picture of the whole map. See, and here's one of a city that I can't even begin to pronounce, so I'm not going to try and then some more pictures of the combat map and combat results table. And like I said, you guys can go check this out on the Kickstarter, which will be up. I believe they're launching this on May 1st. Don't quote me, but I do believe it is May 1st that this is going to be launching. And just in case you're curious, the game box is going to be the sh same shape and size as their previous games. So like they were soldiers here or Huawei 72, it's going to be this size. Okay, yeah, I was right. For the U.S., single game is going to be $16 and then up if you're getting more. It says worldwide a single game is going to be $44. That is, oof. As hard. I'm sorry for those of you who do not live in the continental U.S. I know shipping sucks. I get stuff shipped here from overseas, so I know it sucks for us. I know it sucks for you guys. Shipping is just bad right now. I'm sorry. I wish it were better. We all wish it was better. All right, but that is Arnhem 44 Operation Market Garden. Uh, it does look good. It looks interesting from what I've seen so far. Uh, if you, this is basically if you're into Axis and Allies, right? If you like that type of gameplay. And I think this is going to be a little smaller in scale, something that's not going to take anywhere near as long as playing like a, a full out huge game of Axis and Allies, especially the, the 1942 version that would take days to play through one of those. From what I can gather in this, you could probably play through this in an evening, right? I don't think it would take that long to play through it. Now, I could be wrong, but the rules look streamlined enough. I think you could play through it in an evening if you and opponent sat down went at it. I don't think it'd be that much of a problem. So if you're looking for something with some good size, good historical value to it, looks like good components as well. And it has that streamlined gameplay that you don't have to think too hard about. You can just sit down, move some counters around, move some minis around, throw some dice and just have a fun evening. Yeah, Arnhem 44 is definitely one you want to take a look at. And I'm definitely interested to see uh, how they have it coming out for stuff like Barbarossa or Blitzkrieg. Those would definitely be fun to try out as well. But if you guys have any questions, concerns, or comments, feel free, as always, put them down below. You guys take care. I'll see you in the next one.